Um, I do want to do a quick couple of show and tell. I think it'd be great um, for everyone to see what it, everyone else is working on. So I have a couple of volunteers. Uh, Al, where are you at? Oh, I need a laptop. You need a um, laptop. Can I borrow you as a guy? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> away. Um, we're very community oriented here. Thanks. Um, yeah. So while uh, Al's getting set up, um, I know we have another one. If anyone else is interested in giving like a short two minute thing of you know what you're working on or you know some blocks thing that you got up that you either want feedback on or just want to let people know you're working on, I think a lot of people in this room are you know suffering the same way as you are, and would love to to know they're not alone because uh, I know. I am too. Um, so, so yeah, let me come, you know, we'll let Al show his and um, yeah, come up to me and, and let me know if you want to present. We'll probably do a few in the future. We're going to try to give more advanced notice that we're going to try to do this every meetup. So if you, you know, don't have the nerve to get up this time on the spot, you know, think about what you might want to show next time. Hi, uh, my name is Al. I'm actually a student at Hack Reactor, which is an intensive JavaScript bootcamp for those of you who don't know. It's a 12 week program and I'm currently on week seven, I think. I've been working on a group project lately. So this uh, D3 thing I made was a personal project. And I should just show it to you guys. So who takes the bus here? Anyone? Shout out a line. 47. 47? Sure. There's no B. <laughs> All right, where are you going? Fisherman's Wharf or? Uh, let's say OK. From, this isn't going to be that fun then. <laughs> Where are we at? Bryanton Fourth? Or? All right. Hmm. I think it's Palm Beach, yeah. Two Fourth and Townsend, right? So I just made this little visualizer. Um, I was actually going to do more with just the Muni data from Nextbus. But this was just a quick way for people to you know, see at a glance when the Nextbus is coming in a visually pleasing way and also to see subsequent buses as well. So you could use this on your smartphone right now as well. So if you just tap on the other one, it shows that the next bus is then coming in 42 minutes. And then um, apparently there's no predictions for this 47. But on some of the Muni lines too, if you have, I think the 14 mission, that's a good one. Yep, there we go. So unfortunately right now it's combining all the data. I'm still working on it. but. Um, so I've also managed to do, it's a fake prediction, where basically to get to, say, two stops, it calculates the time to the next stop, and then it subtracts the time from the bus going to your stop to the time to the next stop. But it gives the user a way to you know, easily see how long the trip might take, because I think that's one thing that's always missing from next bus is, I'm on the bus, but I want to know how long I'm going to get to you know, go to my friend's house, or if they're calling me, I want to say I'm you know, 30 minutes late or something like that. So. But yeah, this is, um, it's using Nextbus data. It's querying it every 15 seconds. And the, the arcs will all shorten. So it's just it's using the time. And it's just kind of shortening as it goes. Uh, yeah? Small questions. Uh, one, does Nextbus actually have an API? Yeah, they, they do. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's really, really easy to use. It's just it's easy, but it's all XML documents. So you have to like just parse them with a jQuery. But <laughs> it's not too bad. Yeah. So yeah, any other questions or comments? Anything I should improve? <laughs> Can you review what the rings do? Um, it's actually each bus coming along to you. I think that's always that's still a big thing that I'm figuring out in terms of my UI. But um, it's representing like the next bus is coming in. Well, it's coming in really two minutes, and then I haven't updated. Oh, it's coming in twenty. It's going to take you twenty-one minutes to get to your stop or to get to your destination. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, I've combined two routes right now. So it's showing actually the 47 and the 14 data right now. And so for me, it was, it was a way for people who do take multiple buses. Like say, if you take the 5 or the 31, you can then like match, map two together and then just route, put those. And then when you have it on your phone, you can just see at a glance, which one should I take? Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I take anywhere any from, well, it's three different buses. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Which one is fastest? Yeah, so I made that option for guys like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So um, I started on this like last week. So it's like a side project. I do like one side project every week. So I've since moved on from it. Um, but it's on GitHub. <coughs> so
so uh, I wanted to do this because I'm really obsessed with uh, Hacker News. And I just kind of want to see like what's going on at Hacker News, right? Because I don't really have much time to read everything. Um, so basically, you know, you can just pick like a month and I'll generate like, um, you know, what's, what's really going on. Like this is from, I picked uh, June. So from June, July, August. So basically three months. Um, this is like the data for those three months. Um, and you can see like Go and then JavaScript and then um, I think something else. And I say, yes. So obviously, um, it, it's, it's kind of cool because I kind of played, played around with it. And then uh, uh, one cool example is like this. This is uh, from 2011 when uh, Ruby was kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then something happened at Google. I don't know, maybe like I/O or something. But yeah, that's so that's what it is. Strategy on that for the annotations, just whatever fits. Yes, yes. So basically, what whatever is important is in the middle. Right? The, like the the weight of it. Oh yeah, the code is not pretty. Um, shoot. So, uh, damn. Uh, what do I have? So it's, um, okay, let me see. So really, like the 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 hard part of this is actually scraping the data. <laughs> so the visualization is really easy. Um, so I'm using uh, the uh, layout.cloud, and then I'm basically passing in the size based on like how many um, how many times a certain word appears. Um, and I'm not doing like, any sort of like advanced par uh, parsing. I'm just you know take the um, basically the title and sometimes. You know, if they give me more information, I take that and then I put it in an array. You know, I have a bunch of like stop words up there, which I forgot where I got from. And then uh, I just kind of, you know, I, I basically select a date range and then I just go through all of them and then parse it. Pretty simple. Yes. Do you filter out the common words? Yes, the stop words. Oh, I see. So, and then I have a I have a bunch of programming languages which I'll later do something with, maybe make it red or something. I don't know. Yes? You experiment with transitions at all. You've learned a lot of information about trends if you saw what's changing. Right. Um, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yes. What's your GitHub? Oh, OK, right. Can I just post that later yeah, on the? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yes. Cool. Thank you, guys. This is an example of uh, cross filter plus NVD3 and then uh, some homemade charting. I'm trying to get my mouse over there. Let's see. This window's not quite lined up. Shoot. Hold on a second. Yeah. Anyone want to help me with this? Let's see if I can. And there was this link to just the checkbox there, bottom left. Bottom uh, left. This one. This one. Okay. Cool. Okay. Get that lined up. Still a little off. Okay. How's that? Okay. So, um, Still messed up? Okay. All right. Okay, so I have 
multiple dimensions here. I have a content type. I have uh, country, region, and then um, I have weekly billings for each uh, content type and region. And so uh, I have my timeline view, which can filter down the data set um, that you can drill into and see which content type uh, has the biggest contribution per week. You could change that. This is an NVD3 chart right here. And then this is a, a sorting data table as I drag my data set through. And then you could uh, remove certain content types and then even regions. And then you can get really crazy and you could start, start streaming in randomly generated data. <laughs> um, and this timeline control is pretty cool. You can uh, select months at a time, years, and everything just reacts really fluidly. Uh, so this would not be possible without CrossFilter and D3. And uh, NVD3 is, is really nice if you have a chance to check it out. It's, it's pretty good. N NVD3. It's uh, by a company called Novus, and it's on uh, GitHub. Oh, OK. You'll have to see for yourself. Yeah. Did you make the, the timeline? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I want to open source it, but we'll see. Yeah. 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 Um, how are you wrapping uh, the NVD3? Like, are you wrapping it, or are you just creating? Uh, so um, I create my charting components, and then as, uh, as with cross filter, then I have the um, when the data changes, I just re redraw those charts, those those components. Okay. So yeah. Any other questions? What's your GitHub handle? I can't tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to be showing stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Yeah. Was the were the charts made with the particular kind of data in mind? Um, it's CSV, and I randomly generate like a whole year of billings uh, um, for country and um, content type. So it's like I'm a multinational media company. That's what <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> I'm neither code nor am I an artist, um, so uh, I'm sort of in awe of what everybody does. Um, my background is that I have worked in media in the day when we used to throw sticks at the dinosaurs. I used to run media at Yahoo. And what I love about what everybody's doing is your storytelling through data. Um, and what my little startup does is allow you to light up your D3 uh, artist with, uh, artistry with real-time data. So that um, you can literally have a studio where you plug it in and you point at the data and it comes alive. I'm also about to uh, demo on a QA server, so this is um, that's a triple, uh, triple <laughs> threat. sort of proprietary, so I can show, but I'm going to show you a couple of examples of, of what we do. And if you go on to it, you can literally, we are, we're totally inspired by D3, the D3 library. So you can put in your, it'll, you can plug in any JavaScript into it, and you get visuals like, for example, um, this is 250,000 um, TripAdvisor reviews, and uh, you should run them pretty soon. Uh, we also just, uh, 
uh, we're the first certified partner of Cloudera and Palo, so we can run literally four billions of rows at a time. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, we're a partner for our, our Cloudera and Palo, so you know, no data is really um, too big right now. Uh, we're handling four billion rows. So, for example, this is a this is a Cloudera search that you can do on the data. These are hotel reviews, two hundred fifty thousand hotels. So, if you want to know, like where hotels are disgusting, <laughs> right? uh, apparently London, and this is the structured text, and uh, over here is the unstructured text, um, and you can see what people are saying, and if you want to dig into, for example, if you want to dig into London and drill down, um, you can zoom in and say, well, what's the hotel name? I, I don't <laughs> recommend the Eden Plaza Cromwell <laughs> Crown, for example. You want to know where people are talking about, for example, um, camels? <coughs> hey, Oops. look at that. Hotels. These are the hotels, but let's actually re render that. Mm. Right? This is user error. Not How did you get the data source? Is that you just scrape and store, or are you hitting live content? Um, I'll show you live content. This is just a data dump. This is a publicly available data dump. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll give you a different example here. Are you breaking terms of service? Uh, <laughs> 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 so, um, here's an example. Okay, um, we'll do a tw Twitter feed since that's definitely not breaking terms of service. Um, this is what people are saying about big data right now. And we consider it um, sort of a DVR, so you can roll back in time, you can roll, and you can fast forward. Um, right now, this is live. You can change the visualizations, you can change the filters, you can see the trends. If you want to dig into, um, for example, um, the word, a word analytics, you can see the details, what people are saying, you can reply to them. Um, and we were really, again, like there, there's a couple examples I wish I could show you, but it's proprietary data. There's an example on D3 of a core diagram. It's of a European debt crisis um, and where it's got 20 rows of data. Um, and it just shows where debt is going to and from. We've used it to show a gigantic rural their web traffic. So you, you can see where they enter in from web mail and where they, if they go to sports, and it just basically keeps rendering the cord on and on and on, completely taken from the D3 library. Um, and there's a visualization studio um, there. I, we, we really want more feedback um, because you guys are you know, what we depend on to tell the stories. That's it. Thanks. I'm a visualization statistician, something like that. Um, I am an R programmer, and what I want to talk to you today is about the possibilities that R can now offer with interactive graphics. Um, and at Intel, in the first quarter of this year, I um, had a requirement to build a, a system for visualizing, visualizing um, uh, the performance of a, a research microprocessor. Um, and every day we generated gigabytes of data, and yet there were only a few specialists who knew how to pick out like three or five of those numbers and, and make some sense of it, and specialists are expensive. And yet the, um, the brain power you need to understand these is quite low. The, the real barrier was getting the data to people so that they could look at it. Um, so it turned out that there was a database of all this data that hardly anybody accessed, and I was able to, um, to plug into this. Now, um, for a long time, R has been stuck in the world of generating beautiful, beautiful graphics, um, but it can really only do it in, into, say, PDF or, or JPEGs, um, and it requires um, a lot of experience to use R in an effective way. So what I wanted to do is expose um, the power of R um, and the underlying data to the users who didn't really want to know about programming R at all. Um, and after a lot of searching, I found a, a new technology um, which has been built by Hadley Wickham and friends uh, called Shiny. And what Shiny does is it, ex it allows R to act as a web server um, and can publish the sorts of graphics R can make in terms of PNGs and JPEGs. 
um, and, and that was that was great for a couple of days, and I was able to achieve like my entire three months goals in about half an hour. And they were like, "What next? <laughs> <laughs> what next?" Um, uh, I, you know, we've got all these graphics on the screen. And what I want to do then is I want to zoom into it, and I want to select it, and I want to have tabs and things. And then um, I came across D3, and I thought, "Well, this is fabulous. It can do all of these um, wonderful visualizations." How do I bring those two things together? Um, and it turns out with Shiny, not only can you upload PNGs and JPEGs, you can also send JSON data, and you can write plugins on um, the client side, um, which can then consume those in any arbitrary way. So it was, it was a fairly short step from there to put D3 into this web page. Um, and then I started to explore how I can uh, build visualizations. Now, this is based on the, the API that I built, essentially reusable components. You get a document, which is composed of multiple graphs, and each of those graphs can have subgraphs and can be divided into, um, into what in R is called facets or um, trellis graphs, sort of small multiples. Um, so this is a very simple demo of accessing some of the basic data which comes with R. Um, and unfortunately, I've not got this on my screen, so I'm going to see if I can look at it from the side. So uh, you, if anyone of you have used R, you might recognize these as the example data sets. Um, um, what's happening here is there is R running. It's acting as the server. And any time we change anything in the interface, it goes back to R and says, do some um, selection, filtering, aggregation. Um, so for instance, we should be able to say, um, let's just look at some subtype of diamonds. Um, so this, this is the, the shiny capability up here, and the D3 block is down here. But additionally, um, we can go in and use D3 to navigate around the data. And every time I'm clicking on one of these, it goes back to R and says, the situation's changed. Um, and what I found that was absolutely delightful is um, despite the fact that I was deliberately using transitions, if I just leave the graph where it is and tell it to splat some new stuff, it sort of magically transitions all by itself. <laughs> that, that, that was a rather lovely surprise. I didn't have this dichotomy of wondering whether I should have transitions or bindings. It just sort of worked. Um, so uh, you get nice features like being able to do sub-selections over dates of the sunspot data. None of these are particularly elegant. They're really just a sort of a tech demo of what the underlying thing does. And you can do zooms. We can allow R to um, run its algorithm differently. We want a different number of buckets on it. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that, you know, I had previously thought R was kind of a dead end. It was glorious where it was, but it wasn't proceeding. Um, and now it's, for me, it's gained a whole new lease of life um, when combined with these things. Um, I'm not the only person to have built an API on this. Um, there are uh, three or four of them up and coming. So uh, I think in the next couple of years, we're really going to see a renaissance in terms of what R is able to deliver to the end user. Thank you. Cool. Does, uh, what R does end and where does what D3 does begin? Because I'm familiar with like ggplot2, it's great for plotting, but yes. it's obviously not going to give you the dynamics that you're looking for here. Yeah, so um, I, was, I was very much inspired by what ggplot was able to do. Um, and the interface in this particular example um, uh, is based on the idea of the grammar of graphics. But instead of um, doing a lot of logic on the R side, side and, and essentially generating all of the layout and stuff, what it does is it describes the grammar of graphics and then uploads that into um, a JavaScript module I, I built called G3Plot. And that then does the final steps of doing all of the aggregation and selection before passing it into the reusable graph component. So R is really just doing all of the things that R is super great at, you know, using the PLYR package to do spins of the data. And once you've got it in, in the right form, you then throw it up and all of the graphing is done on the client side. Unfortunately, what that means is you don't get any of the sort of the stylistic magic that people have put into the R plots. You, you, you get what I give you, but um, <laughs> I, I hope I've managed to capture some of some of the elegance and some of the power in terms of sort of faceting and um, one of the graphs I wanted to, to show. If I can, oh no, I think I showed you uh, what we've got the. Are you querying the server live right now, or sorry? Are you querying the server right yes. now? Yes. Okay, well. Yeah, so the server happens to be running on my laptop because the, the online one's broken, but... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this, this is an example of a graph which G3 didn't, G3Pop doesn't do, and I really wanted it to do, which is 
hierarchical axes, and it turns out it's using the, um, the partition tool in D3 is a, is a, a rather neat way to, to achieve that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, really I want hierarchical bits all over the place. The, uh, the legend, for instance, should be hierarchical. You should be able to use it like a, one of those boxes where you've got the pluses and expand and, and drill down. I haven't quite gotten there yet, but um, you know, there's, there's a tool in D3 to do the lovely curves that that would require, so it's, it's, it's tractable. How hard is it to get Shiny to take the, the D3 output as the output? Um, it's, it's not difficult at all. So if, if, you, um, if you think of, uh, they're not gists, what are the, the D3 blocks? You know? Okay, so if you think of the way blocks work, then a block is going to take some data source and it's going to um, then turn that into a graph. And it, as um, there is a very good facility within R to generate JSON data, and um, Shiny can upload JSON data into the browser, then you can imagine you don't even need the API I built. I want to do it because I've got lots of graphs which are kind of similar and reuse ideas. But if what you want to do is you've got a strong idea of there's this great blocks graph that I've already seen, then all you need to do is wire up the data into that and, and hey, presto, you're done. Okay. So you basically just use R to take the data, create the JSON, and then, and then type the yeah, so in the example of the histograms you saw, I've taken the example data, I've done some simple transformation, or of course you could do any arbitrary transformation that you could do in R, and then having got it in roughly the right form, I throw it up into the web page and, and JavaScript takes over the rest of it. Um, and one consequence of this is um, it's actually rather faster than using ggplot because the, um, sort of the math and structure operations in JavaScript are a lot faster than R. So you know, get R to do what it's really good at, but don't worry about finishing it off. You can do that all in JavaScript. Okay. Cool. Thanks.